welcome. This is all Minus One Quick Shots. All right, folks. So today, Project Veritas released a, another video of the uh, CNN technical director. And there's a few things I want to address with this. I'm going to play some of the video of what he has to say. I'm going to tell you ahead of time what he has to say generally as uh, CNN is responsible for crafting a narrative, an, an appropriate narrative that has to be a counter narrative to conservatives. This is essentially what he says. He does not say it so succinctly, so briefly. There is a lot of likes and ums and whatever else. These aren't abstracted out thoughts. They're just a reflection upon what the company does and what this gentleman does. Now, another issue I'm going to address Last night, I was listening to uh, Matt and Blonde's call-in show. Now, if you aren't aware of Matt Christensen, I suggest you go te uh, check him out. He makes excellent content and has been at this YouTube thing for like five years now, um, maybe longer than that. But in any case, uh, one of the callers said he did not like what James O'Keefe did, what Project Veritas did, and thought it was very irresponsible because this technical director had nothing to do with the overall arching company and he is just not correct guys the media is fake it is constantly fake it is propaganda i've told you this time and again it is a large portion of my content because it is something that is very obviously true and i am aware of and i want other people to be aware of now a lot of you who watch regularly are probably very aware of the fake news so to speak and the war of information the propaganda battles the narrative battles right but a lot of folks still believe CNN is actually an up and up legit news source. What they fail to understand is, is that most mainstream legacy media outlets are not up and up news sources. And with that, the case in point before we get into the Veritas stuff is right here. This is U.S. troops or sorry, U.S. intel walks back claims Russia bounties on American troops. Do you recall this happened under Donald Trump that he was ignoring all this? Um, I hope that you do because it never, ever, ever happened. They made it up. This article was released today, April 15th, 2021. Also from the Daily Beast, Intel proves Russian bounties were no hoax, House Dems say. That was last June, 2020. And of course, the honest eyes of... Uh, <laughs> those men there, they would never tell a lie, now would they? And of course, one of the most reputable sources of news out there, or at least seemingly in the minds of many folks. We have NPR, Trump calls bounty report a hoax despite administration's briefing of Congress. Guess what? Daily Beast. It was a huge election time story that prompted cries of treason. But according to a newly disclosed assessment, Donald Trump might have been right to call it a hoax. No, he was right. Russia, I don't think, is involved in our 20-year-long war in Afghanistan. The Russians went through this, by the way, folks. It's why the Taliban exists, because we funded them through uh, Charlie Wilson and the CIA. We funded them, we created them, and therefore we have to fix that problem later on. But why, are we, why have we been in there for 20 years? Um, I, I'm not sure, other than perhaps for the opium. To secure and control the opium in that region. That would be the my thinking, right? Top Pentagon officials say Russian bounty program not collaborated. That's ABC News. That was last June. So when the news is pushing back and forth and we see articles that are a year old or nearly a year old like this, Intel proves Russian bounties were no hoax, says House Dems. And then today it says, oh, no, it was. You have to start questioning how the media works and why it's doing what it does. Now, over here, Drew Holden on Twitter covered this. He has uh, covered numerous, numerous media lies with this. And so I'm just going to go through some very briefly here. And again, this is no surprise to you or me, right? But there are people out there who are still stuck in the mindset that legacy mainstream media is an independent entity outside of the CIA, the FBI, the deep state, whatever you want to call it. 
Look, guys, they're not. They are propaganda outlets. There is some truth in what they say to some degree. You have to read from multiple outlets to get the real story. And most of the time, you know what the real story is. It's going to be the opposite, the opposite of what anyone who is a left winger says. Sorry, guys, it's just going to be. That is the case almost a thousand percent of the time, right? Um, what the left wing does constantly is obfuscate and lie about what they're doing. They, they are not on the up and up, folks. We know that. And again, I'm going to show you a video in a minute about that. So here we have the uh, suspicions about Russian bounty operation in Afghanistan are said to be based in part on interrogations of Afghan militants and criminals. Okay, so no, that is not reliable information. Large amounts of cash found in a Taliban outpost. Okay, that means nothing, uh, especially when they're running heroin. Incepted financial transaction data. Arrest of suspected middlemen. Okay, whatever. So here is the Russian story, uh, secretly offered this, this, and that. But more importantly, um, I, I know it's down here just a little bit. Biden decided that he was going to move back the date of our, uh, our leaving Afghanistan, which Trump had already set, all the way back to September 11th. And people are now praising him where they basically chided Trump before. So... Here we have the Taliban wanted the U.S. to leave. Afghanistan, Turkey wanted the U.S. out of Syria. And North Korea wanted them to stop military exercises in South Korea. Trump has now, to some extent, obliged all three, but without getting much in return. And then in 2021, we went to Afghanistan because of a horrific attack that happened 20 years ago. President Biden said announcing a full withdrawal from the country that cannot explain why we should remain there in 2021. Well, Trump was saying that his whole presidency, wasn't he? And you all said he was an evil, bad man. That Cheeto orange man, so bad, so bad. And uh, here, again, is some more articles, hopefully. Let's see if I can get them to uh, appear. Well, this is how uh, these things go, right? Same thing, though. It says this one from time might be the most egregious of them all. I mean, come on. Again, let me see if I can get this up. You can do it. Oh, it looks like it's there. There we go. Can Donald Trump accept a defeat in Afghanistan? Look at that. Biden moves. Brings to an end America's longest war. A long submarine conflict that's meant to meant a solemn sacrifice to military families and change. Yada, yada, yada. And, and this goes on and on, folks. It's just all over his page. I'm not going to go through all these things. Um... This is an interesting one, though. <laughs> uh, former special presidential envoy Brett McGurk on President Trump pulling out of Iraq and Afghanistan. Not only does it sabotage the Biden admin, it also puts our troops at greater risk. Remember, Trump was doing a lot of uh, anti-war moves at the end of his presidency. So Senator Kane says the Biden admin's uh, plan to fully withdraw the troops from Afghanistan by September 11th is the right call. The right call would have been to uh, have them out years ago, years ago. And again, guys, go over to Drew Holden's Twitter. You can go check this out yourself. I'm not going to keep covering every second of it. What I do want to cover is the few minutes of this. You can hear it from the individual's mouth themselves. And again, I will say this disclaimer. I know James. I'm not like friends with him or anything like that. My wife worked for James for a time. I have met him. She knows him far better than I do. But um, I know what James is doing. I know what James does. Like his, his, what he's doing is he's trying to turn things around because he is a investigative journalist. He likes uh, to call it uh, guerrilla journalism, which is an old term. He likes that because no one is doing it because all they are doing is crafting narratives and sending out propaganda and out of the mouth of this CNN technical director, you will hear exactly that. I was trying to do some research on like the Asian hate, like the, the, the people are getting attacked on a bunch of black men that have been attacking Asian. Um, so I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> We're trying to like help like with the BLM. So what he's saying here is is that uh, a lot of Asian people are be are attacking black people or whatever. I think he has that backwards. A lot of black people have been attacking Asians, and he's saying, "Oh, we want to help Black Lives Matter, and these optics aren't good." 
not worried about the truth, folks. Worried about the optics, right? Like, you're going to, like, I mean, it's individuals. It's not a people, you know? Um, that's not good. The optics of that are not good. These little things like that are enough to set back movements, you know? Because the, 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 uh, the far left will start to latch on and create a story of, like, um, criminalizing an entire people, you know? Just easy, easier headlines that way, I guess. Um, now, he says this, apparently he says far left, it's a misspeak, which is about to be correct. He said, I guess it's easier headlines. Well, what about all of your headlines about Trump being a white supremacist and a Nazi and all the race baiting that you all do over on CNN? I don't know. See, this is uh, the pot calling the kettle black, right? This is uh, people who are unaware of what they do because they are just operating in this ideology and as activists... I am freely admitting to you guys what I am doing is some form of activism, right? I'm not hiding any of that. I'm completely transparent. I do the things the way I do them because I want to be transparent. I don't uh, do these videos live. I pre-record them, but I don't cut them. They're clearly not edited. You see every single mistake I make, every misspeak, everything else. I am concerned about giving you the most honest take I can as a person, as an individual who's trying to figure and think these things out. And that's what anyone who's trying to figure out the truth should be doing. CNN doesn't care about the truth. They care about controlling you and the narrative and pushing their own activism, whatever that might be. And that, my friends, is a problem. It's a conflict of interest because they are supporting a major political party and a major political movement. And look, guys, it always happens. This always happens with the newspaper. We have the Constitution we have now because of the newspaper, because of the Federalist Papers specifically. So this always happens, but you have to be careful with it because what's going on with CNN, it, it, just like a lot of these legacy media outlets, is these people work back and forth between the government or the deep state and the media. They are essentially the fourth branch of government or fifth, depending on how we want to talk about the deep so state, right? So you're saying that the, the far left would label a whole genre of people? I, I kind of miss your point. Um, that, like, uh, no, the conservatives, I'm sorry, not the far left. But uh, you, I've noticed that, like, you'll get headlines that, you know, might... Um, lump people together as opposed to focusing on the individual, like a uh, white man, like a uh, mass shooting of white, white man did mass shooting, completely ignoring uh, all of the mass shootings that happen every week in our inner cities. Uh, this gentleman actually does talk about this a little bit, but again, he wants to obfuscate what's going on. He wants to pretend like, oh, lump people together as opposed show you. to focusing on the individual. He says conservative. And again, this is a, a, uh, a problem with his ability to understand conservatives. This is something in um, something when you're studying uh, animals, zoology, anything, and, and figuring out how they think and perceive the world called theory of mind. It is a, a uh, understanding of your presence and that you are present and an individual and that other people aren't thinking like you. And animals can't di differentiate that really. Um, we have a very sophisticated theory of mind as human beings, which is why we have empathy and sympathy and all of those things that go on uh, with our dynamics and relationships. It's why we cry when our friends are hurt, right? Like I literally have a buddy some years ago who was telling me about, you know, going through this divorce and I was very upset with him. I <laughs> cried later on with my wife about it and um, because I knew his wife and it's just a sad thing, right? No one wants to see that. So that, my friends, is theory of mind. Me understanding someone else's emotions or feelings or the way they're thinking. This guy has no theory of mind about conservatives because he's saying that conservatives are just going to lump everyone together. Okay. Okay. Well, conservatives generally aren't collectivists. So no, we do the opposite of that. 
but he doesn't understand this because he is an ideological collectivist. Therefore, he thinks that conservatives think the same way. All lefties do. They don't even understand the level on which you operate. And I mean that. They have no clue. I've said this before, it's been a while, but this is in part why we should have sympathy for these people because they are lost. And from a Christian perspective, we should have a deep sympathy for them because they're literally just serving Satan. I mean, that's what Trump and I are doing with like the um, China virus. I mean, that puts so much flame on the entire group of people as opposed to, you know, a few careless individuals. Right. Like um, the Chinese virus was not released because of a few careless individuals. The WHO basically hid the appropriate information. The CCP hid any appropriate information to keep this from uh, being, you know, global. They, they didn't share appropriate information. This was released or we were aware of it. They were aware of it in October. The rest of the world wasn't really concerned with it until uh, November or December. And January, February, and March, finally March is when everyone started locking down, at least here in the United States. Some nations did before that. But no one on the conservative side, no one thinks that all Chinese people are responsible for the coup. This is a retarded, idiotic talking point from the left. I'm tired of it. You are a bunch of collectivists. You need to start looking at people as individuals. Like I said, you lack a good theory of mind. You lack the ability to have that. You can't understand people as individuals. It's like you considering that, you know, certain ethnic groups are all one thing or another. They're monoliths, right? And if they're not, then they're called some sort of disparaging term because they don't fit into your group think. It's disgusting. Like, right, the actual source, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, but it, it, is it is it normal for the media to like so say there's a white white shooter, black shooter? Which one are we gonna you know like? Yeah, I, for the longest while, like the story was like people were like la lapping up that it was like you know white guys for like so long. I don't know. I haven't seen anything about focusing on the color of people's skin that aren't. Right. Because whenever the perpetrator is not a white person, they don't say anything about the race. They only say it when they're white. Because that's part of the narrative. Guys, this video is almost over. I'm not going to keep playing it. Um, I just wanted to show you an example of this. This guy is not, again, very articulate. I don't know how many drinks they've had. I don't know quite exactly what's going on. But the conversation is not super intelligible. It's intelligible enough, though, and you get the point. He wants to create a narrative, and he thinks it is his duty, and it is important to do so. Recall, guys, once again, the hoax of the bounties from Russia. And, of course, we know about all of the Russia gate stuff and whatever else. For some reason, the media wishes to make Russia the big enemy and forego the fact that China is building up military operations in the South Chinese Sea, that other groups are looking to fortify their military operations in that area because, well, uh, China is a threat. Taiwan is concerned about Chinese invasion. Hong Kong is being taken over, but nobody cares because Russia, 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 right? The country that has a GDP smaller than Texas, smaller than New York, um, I, I don't know, we could go down the line of, of uh, American states that have a higher GDP. Uh, they're, they're, most European states have higher GDPs, Eastern European, or sorry, Western European, that is, not uh, Eastern European, but Western European states have higher GDPs than Russia. Russia is in a precarious situation where it's still trying to recover from the Soviet Union. And we could talk about Vladimir Putin, you know, making people disappear and whatever else, I guarantee you China is a thousand times worse. And yeah, there might be a lot of freedom in China depending on what province you were in. Same thing with Russia. That's why I say here, you know, go get out of the cities, escape guys, go get some land, go in with some good people, some friends, some church folks, whoever it may be, 
get some people together and start building your own communities. Get a lot of land, patrol your land, learn to protect yourselves, stop relying on our globalist government. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. That's all I have to say for today. So thank you for watching. This has been all Minus One Quick Shots, and I wish you all well.